a beginning of a very delicate time. First weekend of February 2023 and Aptera has invited us to the European unveil of the car. Not sure even if we could call it a car, but that's what it is, at least for me. So, adventure begins. This event will happen in Switzerland, south of Switzerland. And I live in Heidelberg and I'm on my way there. Started at 8 a.m. just before the sunrise. It's now before 10 a.m. First break on the way. Weather is overcast with drizzle and still snow forecasted throughout the Alps till the evening. So this is definitely an adventure and let's see how it turns out. Now it's half past two and I'm already in the southern parts of the Alps going all the way down to Lugano on A2 and then crossing the lakes in Italy and then back up into the Alps. I chose this route to avoid too many adventures in the high alpine passes due to weather as there is plenty of fresh snow uh, that fell in the past days about half a meter to one meter but luckily more to the east from us so eastern part of Switzerland and Austria I don't know yet why Aptera decided to hold their event there. I think it's a part of some other event, event that's happening there, more business oriented. And they're like a guest of honor. I think they just took this opportunity because they had their Gamma prototype in Modena, Italy, visiting CPC. Uh, their manufacturer for the composite parts and frankly I don't really know what to expect uh, from this evening so whatever happens it's gonna be a surprise for me so I saw on the Facebook that both Steve and Chris are there and I don't know who else is there but I don't expect all that many people besides the core technical crew that's taking care of the Gamma prototype. If you stumbled across this channel, I think I don't really have to explain to you what Aptera is. I mean, it's nothing short of a revolutionary vehicle, breaking the tried and true idea of what a car is. For me, it's the first sensible personal mode of transport in more than a hundred years, really, in more than a century. My feeling about the fossil fueled vehicles that we had so far and still are predominant is that they're like a decadent, unsustainable and completely impossible method of transport. They can work for a short period of history while we still have fossil fuels and while the atmosphere is still kinda okay. But in the long run, if we continue using them, we will just slowly kill ourselves, so we have to switch to something else. 
So Tesla is well known for paving the way for all the new wave of electric vehicles that's happening now. I closely followed their progress starting from Roadster. But to me, they were still too much of an ordinary boxy car. So what shaped my idea of how a car should like was Scientific American cover in March 1989 that had a GM Sunracer. That's a vehicle that won Solar Challenge in Australia. Super aerodynamic, solar powered. And I saw that as a nine year old kid and that defined my lifelong perception of what a car should be. Quite windy outside. We have Bora wind, a catabatic wind falling down the mountains. It's coming in waves, shaking the car and you probably also hear all the gusts. So back to cars. So since I was a kid, I was quite bored and sad with all the auto industry all over the world, producing big boxy gas guzzling designs until I saw first ideas, concepts of Aptera back in 2007. And that what's that's that what sparked my interest. I mean, this was the first design that I could say, yes, this is a kind of vehicle that I want to be seen in. Back then, it didn't pan out uh, business-wise. They folded in 2011, 12, I think. But they got together again in 2019. And this time, things look much better. Although the world is entering a bit of a recession nowadays, they chose to be predominantly crowdfunded. And this looks like much more reliable, uh, although not plentiful, source of income for them to actually develop their vehicle. And now they're looking at start of the production. Ideally, it should happen uh, by the end of this year. Uh, guys in US can expect their vehicles early next year, I would say. For Europe, it's not yet uh, all that clear. The one hurdle is the potential issues with uh, homologation. So the way things stand now, Aptera can only put 75 vehicles on the road per country per year due to its width. So the three cycle category in Europe is maximum two meters. Terra is way over that, and that's, that puts it into an exceptional category that is limited by the number of vehicles that they can put on the road. So, one of my missions for today is to actually talk with Terra guys and see what we can do uh, in this direction. Possibly we have to come up with some approach to lobbying, find the right people that we can address to uh, some kind of political pressure. So the European laws get changed in this manner. And then we can actually start using the most efficient vehicle there is currently in the world in actual everyday uh, movement and transport and do some actual trips with it. So this is what this channel will be about. When we actually succeed in getting our Apteras, I have a couple of ideas for our very nice road trips across Europe. On top of those that I'll be doing uh, as part of my regular hobbies. And I hope to cover 
at least a few if not most of them and share it with you. <laughs> Then life gets easier. Yeah, flow. <laughs> You're a pretty big guy, so see if yeah. it. Uh, pretty big and still almost disappears. So the you can be lower. It's what? You can be lower. Oh yeah, this one's not adjustable, but the one in production can be lower. Than the other. Uh, that that's in the highest position. So it's probably another two and a half inches you can be lower. Uh, the screen's also smaller in production, so it's it's up another inch and a half, like 50 millimeters, and the screen's actually smaller. So we have kind of a knee issue with big guys. I think going with a smaller screen and raising it up a bit is good help too. We had to make room for the airbag on the passenger side. So the airbag company said, you know, you need a smaller screen. Your airbag's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Good visibility all the way. You can probably see my feet right here. It's a. Uh, you know, lots of lots of trucks and stuff to see. Uh, so you push that button and you push with your elbow at the same time. Usually you do it with one hand. So you hold your hand like this and you push it. Push the button. Push the button. Chris, very squishy. Chris, how will it be in in accident? Probably the the ones inside uh, without functions. How do they, those who want to help into the car? How do you oh, open the door? Um, so there's a manual release that's behind the seats now, but the manual release yes. will be inside but, but, here. But from outside, if the those who want to help, you to break inside. The yes. Break the window. Yeah. Or it's like the Tesla. It's like the Tesla. If, if, you, uh, if you're in a Model S and you get an accident, the, the handle doesn't deploy. So, so, you, can, the so you have to break the window and then use the. There's a mechanical latch inside. So we have a mechanical latch that's right here. So you'd have to break the window and reach in and grab right here. To open. Which, okay. which is weird, but not impressive. There have been other This is super So some conclusions. As you've seen, the footage from the event is dark and grainy and poorly lit. Two reasons for that. First, I'm not at all equipped to do indoor nighttime footage without any light. I'm equipped for daylight, sunshine, recordings, uh, since my equipment is primarily tailored for uh, my other YouTube channel. Why it was that way? Uh, it's an interesting story. So, the whole event is a business conference, primarily, and guys at Aptera thought we can't get people into Modena because Modena CPC doesn't have any tourist-like facilities to, to, to get people there and show them around. Uh, but this place in Switzerland has. So let's drag uh, our car up into this uh, hotel, Maloya Palace, uh, invite people there so they can see it. I mean, the place is impressive. I can easily imagine it as a background for some James Bond movie. All it's lacking is just a casino. Um, but the weather didn't cooperate. Uh, it wasn't the snow that was an issue, but uh, the winds. So the idea was to have uh, Terra in front of the hotel. But uh, that place was uh, too exposed to winds. We would all freeze there. So we had temperatures at around minus 2 centigrade. And wind gusts over 100 kilometers per hour. And 60 miles. 
uh, so it wasn't really an environment that you would enjoy uh, standing outside so what they did they moved the car to the back of the hotel there are some uh, garage like uh, half opened basement uh, place where the hotel has a electrical charging point for cars uh, it's reasonably well protected from the wind that's where we were but that place has no light so what we did uh, we got another car uh, high beams on pointed to the Optera and that was basically all the light we had it was quite uh, an experience uh, interesting to to be there but not as interesting or uh, sufficient to, to do any good pictures there uh, so kind of mysterious and that's what happened i mean the turnout was uh, less than i expected i mean the invitation mail said that there's like 50 place for 50 people available at the turn uh, the organizer said that uh, around 25 signed in which was i don't know was it snow or what that uh, held them back i mean we also had to pay for the dinner and uh, only around 10 people showed up there eventually so not sure how that worked out uh, so the conference had i don't know 100 ish uh, people there about so at least uh, the turnout there looked good and i hope that any of those was sufficiently impressed with Optera that uh, the whole trip was worth for uh, worth it for the Optera guys. So we were down there about one hour, then went for a dinner, and we had very nice dinner with uh, Chris and Anton, uh, Chris and Steve. Uh, seven around the table uh, we discussed basically all the topics that are being discussed around Aptera from aerodynamics to battery chemistry to bureaucracy and everything in between and that was like a privilege that was worth uh, paying for I mean uh, it's exactly how I hope the whole thing will turn out uh, to get some quality time with uh, Terra founders uh, to exchange our views, uh, ideas and possibilities for the way forward, especially in Europe. So I think the whole trip was worth it, uh, despite the potential challenges on the road. I must say that I was impressed with how Switzerland uh, handles their winter on the road uh, very efficiently, very quickly. No issues whatsoever, but unfortunately they cannot control the wind yet, so we have to adjust for that. What comes next? I don't know. For Aptera, we are waiting for some good news to happen eventually uh, on topic of financing production. Uh, fingers crossed that they can actually start production on time as planned. But as this is startup world and we have a recession coming, uh, there's no guarantee whatsoever that. Uh, anything will happen as planned so hard to say so what comes next for this channel again we'll follow uh, Terra progress uh, focusing on Europe and when first cars start arriving uh, we'll probably do some next uh, trips uh, to, to meet them here and had some initial rides so my car will be arriving late i'm aiming for the largest battery as a plan to do really thousand mile trips in one day like this one was very close so this one was like 
don't know, 600 miles, 700 miles maybe. Um, yeah, that, that's the plan. It will happen ideally in about two years. Realistically, three or four. So, I uh, don't expect a lot of videos. It will, they will only start to appear once we get our cars. Thank you for now and see you later.